I'm currently cutting a feature and I've completed the rough cut. Now it's time to address some of the director's notes. I've done the heavy lifting. The cut itself is 97 minutes long. There's something really new and exciting that I'm using in this particular project and it's Frame.io. Welcome to Frame.io, the video collaboration platform. If you haven't heard, Frame.io is basically an online platform where I can directly upload cuts, have the director give me notes. I can take these notes back into Final Cut 10 or Adobe, it works on both systems, and address them. So I was gonna show you how much more efficient this process is. You basically can access Frame.io through a browser like this one. And then you'll see all the different projects that I'm currently working on. You might have seen eight creativity hacks. That's the one that I just published on the channel. There's an editing course I'm doing. There's a new episode that's coming up. This is the feature. This feature, by the way, is a period thriller shot in Germany based on a true story about a female serial killer in circa 1820. Let's, for example, look at this version here in particular. The director gave me just some initial notes right here as he was watching. Now you notice he kind of stopped giving me notes over here for the rest of the feature. That is because he was actually flying over on the plane, he started giving me notes and then he came here. Then we watched the film together and he gave me some more notes. And that's the second step I'm gonna do today. I actually took handwritten notes as we were watching the movie together. And I'm thinking about actually first going into Frame.io because I have all the time codes written down where we decided to make changes. And then I'm gonna bring those in as well. But in this first step, I'm going to just bring in the notes that he just gave me while he was on the plane. The nice thing with Frame.io is it actually is an app that you can open up directly in Final Cut 10 and I believe now also in Premiere. And here you also see all my folders. Here's the feature. Let's go in there. I can actually bring these notes into this timeline. So if I open this up, you see these notes here. I can find a spot in the movie. Let's take the very first shot here playing backwards. This is the very first shot right here. Now I'll go into this video and I look for that first shot as well. Here's some temp credits. So now I'm actually playing this in frame IO and I'm waiting for that frame to come up right here. Frame by frame I can jump here. Now I press this link button and now both timelines are sunk up with each other. So if I go to a note, so for example, we're at this point and he writes, this is not perfect how the little boy is looking. Maybe we don't have it in a different way, then it's not such a big deal. Let's look at this for a second. It might be a little choppy. I might wanna consider just holding on that shot a little bit longer. As soon as I address these notes, the sync is going to shift in this cut. So instead of doing the notes right now, I'm going to bring the notes into Final Cut 10. And this is how this works. You have a little button here that you can use. It says drag and drop this comment clip into our Final Cut Pro timeline. So I'm going to take this and just put it anywhere here in the timeline and let it go. What happens is that this compound clip appears and I'll just drag it to the very beginning so that it lines up with uh, my cut. And I can break this up, which I just did with the shortcut. And now all the nodes are markers that are now attached directly to these different shots. Let's say I'm going to move this shot what should happen is that all these markers are now moving with the cut. And that's what they do. So they stay synced to the specific shot or clip. I'm going to just delete that. And then these markers drop down here. Okay, let's take a look at this note that I haven't addressed yet. The second cut to this dude should probably be a little bit later. Otherwise, this moment is going to be a little bit too much of a pregnant pause. It's too heavy handed. Kommen die bald wieder? 
So this is the first shot. That's the second one. So here he says, trim the head of the shot. Possibly here. Before I comment, let's see what other options I have. Yeah, I think that works. We still get a little micro gesture here. So let's give that a try. Yeah, totally works. So I did that note. I'm gonna say complete it. I'm also gonna let him know that I addressed the note. So it's a real good way to just keep track of all the notes, make sure they're all addressed, or I have the chance to talk about what the problem is or why I haven't addressed it or what question I might have. And the reason why they are up top here is because they're actually technically on a different layer or what they in Final Cut 10 call a different role. And these are the comments. So if for some reason I'm done with the notes, I want all the notes to disappear before I output, I just click on here and then they're invisible. Each role that I have here, voiceover, dialogue, effects, music, as soon as I click on them, they disappear. See that, they're now all grayed out. So if I play this right now, we don't hear the dialogue. I'll bring the dialogue back. And they're back. Now let's talk about these handwritten notes that I got. So I go back into Frame.io. The first note is, and I believe I did an episode about this. She poisoned this little boy and she also poisoned her. The way that I cut it, I show how she gets the poison out, but I don't show which bowl she picks. So this is where I show the two bowls. And right here, I cut away from it. The director says, let us see which bowl she picks so that we know that she is gambling. That the friend that is with her, if she was going to pick the right bowl, meaning the one without poison, she would survive or serial killer would pick the other one. So show her pick the bowl. I'll put that in here. The note appears there. The note also appears here. So I now know at 4415, I need to address that note. The director also has the note to give this boy maybe another close up, a little bit more of interaction between him and the senator so that we feel for him more. Hans, Finger da weg. I'm just gonna write here more screen time for the boy. That's my note, boom. So now you've seen, I've done a couple of notes over here. Let's say I have written all the notes into the cut. Now I could go back to Final Cut 10 and I can again do the thing with the import and drag it into here like this and just line it up again with the beginning. And you see that note that I've just given now appears in that timeline again. I'll break this clip apart. I don't need the time code. And this note is now fully integrated here and I can address those notes. Once I'm done and I want to send this back to the director so that he can see how the notes are working, I'll share it back to Frame.io and then it would immediately start uploading this project into the right folder so that only the people that I have authorized to see this particular project can see it. If this is something you're interested in to improve your workflow, they have a free trial and I'll include a link in the video description. You go check that out. You can have like one or two projects with like a couple of collaborators in there. I've been using it now for the past four months or so. As I said, I have all the different projects that I work in. I have different collaborators in each project right here. This is a project that Dennis is working on. This is an upcoming video that you will see soon. This is an editing course that I'm currently building with Vinny and Steve together. And you can see there are quite a lot of items in there. Like each module has several videos in there. This is not just a software based tutorial. This is really about storytelling. So you'll see a lot of advanced 
editing concepts used to shape a story. And then in a later module, it really is also about your career as an editor. Almost daily, I get asked this question more than any other. How do I become a working editor? How you brand yourself as an editor that you are portraying a promise of an experience and how you then can turn that great experience that a director or producer might have and leverage that up and develop your career. And then in the later modules, we're actually doing some genre editing. So we have actual footage from a feature, actual footage from a documentary, actual footage from branded content. This module is about branded content. It is really the bread and butter of many editors. This is where you can make consistent good money. It's an important genre that you need to be working in and do exercises in. The students will get to content, cut scenes and cut like story scenes. arcs and build like almost an entire act for each genre. That's part of this course that will come soon. Yeah, so in the, in the upcoming episodes on Patreon, I will now go through the notes. We have about two weeks before the director comes back. We're gonna record an episode on Patreon together where we're gonna answer your questions about this project. So if you've seen all the previous episodes or some of them, and you have some specific questions for the director about maybe the process of what it took to shoot this film and what the collaboration was like. Just leave a comment and I will bring those questions up during our session. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Okay, this is all working for me. I'm gonna just double check and make sure this master is the better, the best one. I can see here the red, this is the master that I ended up using. Anything that's in the timeline will have a little red marker here.